This might come as a surprise, but Russia is such a multicultural and diverse country that it's actually really difficult to enumerate all its ethnicities brought together under one giant roof. Depending on who you ask, Russia is home to more than 170 nationalities, which is actually pretty hard to comprehend. One of the least known places in this giant country is the Republic of Tuva. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. Tuva is a federal republic located at the southern tip of Siberia. This is actually the geographical center of Asia, sort of. Depending on the definition of the continent's borders, the center of Asia is either in the Tuvan city of Kuzul or near the Chinese city of Urimqi. I'll let others decide which one is the correct one. Tuva is about as big as Denmark, Netherlands, Switzerland and Estonia put together, but with only 300,000 inhabitants. This means it's one of the least densely populated regions on Earth. So let's dive in and see what this place is all about. The territory of modern-day Tuva has had its fair share of conquerors. Since the 3rd century BC, it's been controlled by the Xiongnu Empire, the Xianbei Confederation, the Ruran Khaganate, the Mongol Empire, the Northern Yuan, the Khodgoid Khanate, the Zungar Khanate, the Chinese Empire, Tsarist Russia, China again, and the USSR. With the exception of the beginning of the 20th century when they were kind of independent, this long string of controlling states has been continuous. Nevertheless, the Tuvan people, a Turkic nation, managed to keep their own identity, culture and language to this day. Let's get back to that independence, cause it's a bit more complicated. From the 18th to the 20th centuries, Tuva was part of Mongolia, which in turn was part of the Chinese Empire. Once the revolution started in China, Tsarist Russia started to form a separatist movement among the Tuvans. Thus, an independent state was proclaimed, the Uryanchai Republic. This lasted until 1914, when the leader of the nation asked to become a Russian protectorate, and thus they became a part of Russia. But then, the Russian Revolution arrived and Tuva was occupied by the white Russian troops, the anti-communist forces of the country. Then, it was occupied by the Bolsheviks, then again by the Chinese. By 1921, the area was once again independent, the Tuvan People's Republic, or Tanu Tuva. They were de jure independent, but in fact were firmly under the control of the USSR. Amazingly, this quote-unquote independence lasted for 23 years, but eventually, in 1944, Tuva was annexed back into Russia. Before we get to the next fact, I'd like to ask you one thing. This video isn't sponsored, none of them are so far, so perhaps you'd consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. If you still enjoy my content, go visit my Patreon page and help this channel out. And with that said, let's go to fact number 4. Kuzul is the capital city of Tuva. It was founded as Belotsarsk or White Tsar's town, then later renamed Kuzul, meaning red. Yeah, this wasn't political at all. Anyway, Kuzul is the supposed geographical center of Asia, but as I said, that depends on who you ask. This is an exotic location not many have seen. But before you go pack your bags, check the weather, would you? By the first days of September, the first frosts arrive. October to November already brings temperatures below 0 degrees Celsius up to minus 20 degrees. After November, the real frost begins. Temperatures of minus 25, minus 30 or even minus 50 degrees are not uncommon here. So, you know, bring a warm jacket. Perhaps Tuva's greatest offering for the visitor is its musical treasure, Komei. Tuvan throat singing, or Komei, also known as the Mongolian throat singing, is one particular variant of overtone singing practiced by the Tuvan people. The performer produces a fundamental pitch and, simultaneously, one or more pitches over that. 
The uniqueness of this art lies in the fact that the performer simultaneously sings two or sometimes even three notes at the same time, thus forming a peculiar polyphonic solo. While Tuvans are certainly not the only ones who sing this way, their Kome is certainly a valuable part of humanity's cultural heritage. Tuva is one of the few places in the world where the original form of shamanism is preserved as part of the traditional culture. Shamanism presumes the existence of good and evil spirits inhabiting mountains, forests and waters, the heavens and the underworld. The mediator between man and the spirit is the shaman. It is believed that with the help of spirit, the shaman is able to cure patients and predict the future. In Tuva, shamanism peacefully coexists with Buddhism, which is an important detail since almost two-thirds of Tuvans are actually Buddhist. While Tuva is a spectacular place and Tuvans among the most interesting nations, living here is quite the challenge. And I'm not just talking about the climate. Unfortunately, economy-wise, Tuva is not doing so greatly. This republic ranks as one of the least attractive regions of Russia in terms of investment. Mining and agriculture are the main occupations here, and neither are the most enriching jobs in the world. Right now, Tuva remains the least developed region of the Russian Federation. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time, bye.